Good evening, Honors Algebra. This is Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for December 8th. I think that's the right date. I can't keep it straight anymore. Um, okay, we need to talk a little bit more about graphing absolute value functions. Let's say we have a function that looks like this. Y equals the absolute value of x and that is just our baseline, right? And I'm going to put that back up because I know many of you didn't watch the video. I know some of you had legitimate excuses, but I know some of you were just lazy or chose not to do it. Or, you know, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich you were talking to was more interesting. I find that very insulting, by the way. So, um, again, I apologize for those of you that really had a legit reason where you couldn't watch it. But I know that was not the norm. So I need you to watch the videos. Hopefully you're hearing this message and therefore you're watching it. All right, hold on one second. Okay, remember, everything works off of this equation, y equals the absolute value of x. The first thing I do is I find my vertex. One, find the vertex. The vertex, it's like the corner. It's the bottom of the V. It's the place where the, the lines kind of change direction. Well, I know that there's nothing being added to this equation. And there's nothing being added inside the absolute value. So my vertex occurs at 0, 0. And I will put my vertex there. Now I look here and I don't see anything. I assume that there's a 1 there. So it's like having a slope of 1. I rise 1 and I run 1. And I rise 1 and I run 1. And I rise 1 and I run 1. And I rise 1 and I run 1. But the absolute value, remember, it bends up the other part of the line. I won't have points down in the third quadrant. Remember, this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Okay? Uh, hopefully you've heard the names of the quadrants before. And for this one, I rise one and go back one, rise one, go back one, rise one, go back one, rise one, go back one. The line must be symmetrical, or the V, that is, must be symmetrical. So it ends up looking kind of like this. And let me see here. I'll get this one drawn. Boom. All right. Properties. I got to turn them green. It's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. There we go. Okay. Enough Kermit. We have y equals the absolute value of x, all right? Now we're quickly going to review what happens when we start to mess with that equation. So in blue, I am going to graph the equation. Oh, I forgot to tell you what step two was. I did it, but step two was to use the slope to get the other points, right? Okay, I'm oversimplifying that, but I am in a hurry. Okay, let's take this equation now. Let's take y equals negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1. Oops. Uh, plus 4. The first thing to do is to find the vertex. Well, to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, I look in here. I change the sign. I get a negative 1. To get the y-coordinate of the vertex, I look right here. I keep the sign. It's a 4. So my vertex occurs at the point negative 1, positive 4. Sorry about that beep. There was an announcement, but I hopefully didn't get too much in your ear. All right. So I go to the point negative 1, positive 4. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh-oh. I'm not in writing mode. Uh-oh. I'm not in writing mode. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, man, Andrew's going to come and tell me, Mr. Lawrence, the vertex wasn't at the right point. I better fix that right now. Okay, so it's at 1, 4. There we go. Now, my slope looks like it's going to be 3 over 1, negative 3 over 1. That negative is going to flip the V downward, and so therefore I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, over 1. Down 1, 2, 3 over 1. Of course, the points are symmetrical about that vertex. That is, if I could draw a, a line along the vertex, can't see that line, but I'll put it on this vertex. 
my lines all my points all have to be symmetrical. So notice I went down three, right one, I have to go down three, back one. Down three from there, back another one. And look at that. This point here is two units away. This point here is two units away on the other side. It's almost like the vertex has a mirror running through it, and the points on each side reflect into the points on the other side. Okay, so let me get rid of that, because that's not actually part of my graph, but it is a good way to think about it. All right, and I'll come in here and do that, and I think I will make him a little bit thinner, and I need to make him blue, fuzzy and blue, that's me, I'm fuzzy and blue, from head to bottom of shoe, can't help being beautifully blue. All right, very good. Sorry for the off-key singing. Used to be a lounge lizard back in the day. Not really. All right, there we go. So, the, uh, I think that's enough said about that. That's how you go ahead and graph. Now, the real question is this domain and range stuff, okay? Remember, we're not using t-tables to graph these. We use the t-table to get an understanding of them. We're not going to use a t-table to get the domain and range. First of all, these graphs go on forever, don't they? Your t-table can't possibly go on forever. So to try to use a t-table to do domain and range would leave you missing about, oh, say, a Google's worth of points. Actually, way more than that. So let me do an equation here. Let's go y equals 1 half times the absolute value of x uh, minus 2 plus 1. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my vertex, and my vertex will be located at the point 2, 1, and I'm going to plot that 1, 2, 1. My slope is 1 half. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. Okay, back, up one, back two, up one, back two, up one, back two. All right, then I'll go ahead and draw my line, my V, that is, sorry. Okay, I'll make him a little bit thinner. I'm going to leave him black um, so that he stands out, but I am going to make him thinner. Oh, he went on a diet. Look at how much weight he lost there. Awesome. Okay, and I will... Make him thinner, and there we go. Okay, so there's my graph. Now, to figure out the domain, I am going to use a vertical line, a vertical line. And the domain, remember, refers to all of the x values, all of the x values. And I'm going to ask myself, I'm going to move this vertical line along the x-axis. Just like that. Oh, look at him bounce back. Awesome. All right. Now, I'm going to see where I can put that vertical line on the x-axis so that it will hit my graph, and where I can put it on the x-axis where I won't hit the graph. For example, if I put it at x equals 0, the y-axis, it hits the line, doesn't it? It hits it right here. Okay? If I put the vertical line at 2, it hits the V right there. Right? If I put it at 10, it hits it up here. Right? Okay? Let me ask you this. What hap Oh, wrong one. What happens if I put that vertical line over here at negative 10? Will the V hit it? It sure will, because this little arrowhead means that it goes forever, right? The graph goes forever. So eventually, if I continue this graph long enough, it will intersect and keep on going. If I were in the classroom right now, I mean, I am in the classroom, but if you were in the classroom right now, this would be a situation where I might make a stray mark on the wall and see if my vertical line will definitely hit it. So... Is there any place, any place on the graph 
And remember, graphs go forever. It doesn't go from negative 10 to positive 10. It goes on for in, to infinity in both directions. It goes infinitely long that way and infinitely long that way. Is there any value of x that will not touch the graph? No, there isn't. No matter where I put it, I will hit the graph. My domain for this graph is all real numbers, the real number system. Any real number can be in the domain because I can put any number in for x and I will get some number out for y in this equation, in a t-table in other words. I'm not limited, I'm saying this many, many times, I am not limited to the number of x's that you pick for your t-table. Those are just the ones you pick. This v goes on forever, okay? Now range, range refers to the y values, right? Y values, the range refers to the y values. Well, for the range, I'm gonna use a horizontal line. Now, when you go to use these lines, you can use a pencil or, or something like that, but I'm gonna use a horizontal line, okay? And let me change it so it's not broken because Somebody will call me on a technicality and say, Mr. Lawrence, it technically doesn't hit that because there's a break in it. Okay, well, now it's nice and solid. All right, and I'll leave it nice and thick. Now, I'm going to move the magenta line along the y-axis. And I'm going to see if where, what values of y, the magenta line will hit the, the v and where it won't, just like I did for the range. Oh, excuse me, the domain. All right, well, let's see here. If I put it up here at 10, y is 10, we know that it's actually going to hit in two places, right? It's going to hit here, and then it's probably going to hit somewhere over here. My recorder's in the way. It's probably going to hit somewhere over here. Oh, I'm not in draw mode. Okay, somewhere like that. Of course, I could extend this further to prove that it hits. All right, well, let's come down a little bit. Let's see, I think y is 3 there, 1, 2, 3. It's hitting at 3, isn't it? It hits at y equals 1. Is there any place it doesn't hit? Yeah, there's a whole lot of places. Look down here. Am I hitting the v? Am I touching the v? Am I touching the v? Am I touching the v? No, I'm not touching the v. I'm not touching the v. What's the smallest value that I can put this magenta line at, y value, and still be touching the V. Well, it looks like it would be Y equals one, right? So my range, my range must be all the numbers such that Y is greater than or equal to one. Because as soon as I get a smidgen below one, a smidgen below, oop, there, that's the official definition of smidgen. See that little white space in there? I am no longer hitting the V. I'm not hitting it for zero or any of the other numbers, right? Domain and range are really easy. Let's look at another example. We'll look at a stranger one. Uh, wrong one. Okay. All right, and this time I will just make up a graph. And I will make my graph do this. Let's see here. You actually won't graph anything that looks like this in class, but I'm trying to do the domain and range for you. So I'm not going to give you the equation. It's unnecessary. Okay. So for my domain, remember for the domain, I need a vertical line. Okay. My domain, I'll do in blue. All right. So for the domain, I'm going to move along the x-axis, and I'm going to find out what values of x will put me on the v, and what sideways v and what values of x won't well it looks like when x is most of the positives i'm going to be hitting it right but when x is negative i definitely won't be hitting it when x is zero i won't hit it it looks like the smallest value of one that will actually hit the function it looks like it's at x equals one so in this particular case and it's only this instance the domain will be x, all x's that are greater than or equal to 1. Okay. To do the range, I need a horizontal line. 
again, I'll make that guy solid. All right. And I will move it along the y-axis. Let's see, it looks like I'm going to hit the positives, right? Because remember, I am hitting the V up there because that thing just keeps on going, right? Okay, so I'm going to hit it when y is positive. Am I going to hit it when y is 0? I sure am. When am I going to hit it when y is negative? What about when y is a real tiny, 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 tiny negative, like negative 10 billion? Will that V still intersect it? It sure will. It'll just happen way down off the board, probably down a thousand feet under Edwards Middle School, if I could continue the graph that far. So I'm not finding any values for y that won't hit the graph. So in a case like that, I say y, um, the range, excuse me, is all real numbers. Okay, we'll look at one more example here, and then we'll turn you loose so that you can go get some work done. All right, so, okay, let's say, and again, I'm not going to give you the equation. I'm just going to put here, I'll bet you could tell me the equation now. If you knew, if you knew that this vertex was... The point, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six, one, two, three, four, five, the point six, five. I'll bet you could come up with the equation. All you'd have to do is y equals absolute value. I'm going to check my slope. I'm going to rise one, run one, so I, I just can put a one there or don't need anything. I need an x. I have a negative six, so I'm going to add six. I have a positive 5, so I'm going to add 5. There's the equation if you really feel like you need it. But the point is we're looking for domain. So the domain, I'll get my vertical line back. Have I said enough that you use a vertical line to test for domain? The vertical line. Are there any values of x? It looks like I got an extra line in there. Let me get that out of there. Okay. Uh, are there any values of x that won't hit the graph? This one, you know, way out here, it will, because if I could raise that blue one up and I could continue the black one on forever, eventually they will cross each other. So when X is a really large positive, I'm hitting the, the V. When X is a normal size positive, I'm hitting it. X is zero, I'm going to hit it. X is negative, I'm going to hit it. Real tiny negative, yeah. So it looks like there are no values where... Uh, X is not going to hit the graph, so the domain is all real numbers. All right, let's check the range. wonder if I can do this. Let's see here. Oh, that worked very nice. There is my uh, horizontal line. I'll change it to magenta because some of you go, Oh, Mr. Lawrence, it was magenta before. Actually, I don't have a magenta, but that's pretty close. And now I'll move along the y-axis, all right? Uh, where are the values? Well, it looks like I'm not going to hit it until I get to right about there. What's that y-value? Well, because I listed my vertex, I know that that y-value is 5. So it looks like my range is y greater than or equal to 5. And there you go. That's domain and range. So those of you that were graphing equations today and not knowing how to do domain and range, you should know how to do it now. Okay, tomorrow in class we'll get a little extra practice, and um, the test has been moved to Tuesday. We have uh, one more thing to learn before that, and then we've got to get into some story-type problems, and then we'll do systems after Christmas. All right, so this is Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody. Buddy.